Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to Hacker 101. All right, if you've been following along in the playlist, we have installed Metasploitable 2 in VirtualBox, and we've been hacking on Metasploitable 2 in the last few videos. All right, and if you haven't been following along, then you may want to start at the beginning of the playlist where we install Kali Linux Metasploitable 2, and we, we start hacking through all the different services. Um, yeah, give that a shot if you haven't already been following along. Um, one thing I, I do want to point out to everyone that is following this playlist, because I've had a couple of questions from people where they're asking me how to do certain things that are in these um, tutorial videos, and, and really what it boils down to is you, you got to watch the whole video. If you don't watch all the video, then you may miss out on some pieces, and you might not quite understand what's going on. So make sure you watch the video from the beginning to the end to make sure you understand exactly what we're doing. All right, so today... We're going to use, we're going to hack port 80. That's HTTP, the web server service. Um, we're going to pen test that and, and see what we can find on the Metasploitable 2 server. All right, so first thing, let's um, pull up Kali Linux, if you haven't already got that loaded. All right. All right, here's my nmap scan of uh, my Metasploitable 2 server, and here's port 80. It's open. We can see it's running Apache 2.2.8 on Ubuntu, um, but we want to know a little more information about, you know, the web server, and we want to check and see how it's configured and make sure it's configured securely. So I'm going to go through a couple of different things with you guys today. And so the first thing I want to do is um, let's load up your Firefox browser, put in the IP address of your Metasploitable server, and, and that way you can browse to the home page here where you see Metasploitable 2. And um, all right, so once you're on this page, if, if you're not familiar with web developer tools, this is a handy tool that can help you find out more information about the web server. So let's load up web dev tools by going to, to the little um, pancake menu there, more tools, web developer tools. All right, so we will have to refresh the page. But what I want to point out to you is if you click on the forward slash, that's the home page. If you look at the headers, response headers, whenever you're communicating with a web with a website through your web browser, it has it has it uses headers. And these response headers will tell us a lot about the web server. And if you've noticed, it tells us it's running Apache version 2.2.8 on Ubuntu. And it's also telling us that it's running PHP 5.2.4 for Ubuntu. All right, typically, a good web administrator would not let this information be available for someone to look at. This is sensitive information because if this version of Apache or PHP is outdated, then a hacker can easily see that. So, in my opinion, this is a misconfiguration of this web server because through your Apache config file, you can block this type of information so it's not exposed. So, Web Dev Tools is a good place to get started. Um, when you're doing a pen test audit on a website, for example, you want to look at the, the response headers and see if it gives you any, any information. All right, so that's the first place I look whenever I, whenever I perform an audit on a web server, on a website or a web server. So let's go ahead and close the web dev tools. And I want to show you, um, so I want to point out one thing. So this is a PHP, we noticed this is um, Apache and it's running PHP. Uh, one other common misconfiguration is, is that web, men, web admins will load a file called PHP info. Um, and, and this, and I'll show you guys. So if you open up your browser and type in forward slash um, PHP info dot PHP and hit enter, you see this page is telling us all kind of information about the version of PHP. You never should expose that to the public. Um, because, like I said, if you're running an older version, this can tell a hacker or a security auditor, hey, um, I'm running old software, and it's CGI enabled. And, you know, just a, a lot of information here that you don't want uh, a hacker to find. So in a situation like this where you have this PHP info file, this should be in a, in, in a password-protected directory somewhere where the public can access it. Okay. All right, so that's the PHP info file. And then I want to show you another um, another um, cool trick when you're doing a security audit on a website or a web server. And we're going to click on this third um, web application because it has what's called a robots.txt file. 
that I want to show you guys. And at robots.txt file, what that is, is this is a way of telling Google, I do not want you to index this page or this directory into your Google search results. It's private. We don't want people to be able to find this in your search results. So you create a robot dot robots dot text file to exclude that from you know search engine bot crawlers and this is saying user agent and it's saying all bots so any google bot any yahoo bot um, bing bot or any like that it's going to say do not index these pages and rightfully so you see this is a passwords directory um, which this is a misconfiguration you never want to have this wide open the way it is see there's an account dot text file this has passwords in it and whatnot. If, if you have a directory like this that has sensitive information, you can add a password to that. That way it's secure and no one can get in and see this information unless they have the password. So this is another misconfiguration of Apache. Um, this file, config.inc, um, this is a configuration file. This should not be viewable by the public. So you see the, brow the um, Apache web server is showing us this configuration file this is most likely a, a permissions issue you don't want to give the browser permission to expose this type of information this should you know have different permissions all right and then you know you got these other directories like the documentation directory and so forth so you get what i'm point, pointing out is robots.txt is a good place to look when you're doing a security audit on a web server or a website um, because it could expose um, some information about hidden directories and whatnot okay all right so those are the first steps that i would take if i'm auditing a web server or a website um, so next let's go to metasploit and i'll show you how to find this exact same information using metasploit also so if you don't have msf console loaded up go ahead and type it in <clears throat> and if you notice, I, I kind of enlarged the text. Um, someone in, in a previous video mentioned that the text wasn't big enough and he couldn't read it. So let me know in the comments if this is better. And um, if not, then I'll increase it a little bigger. All right, so load up Metasploit. All right, and I'm going to show you an auxiliary scanner um, that we can check the version of the web server, you know, and see what software it's running, you know, which web server software is it Apache, Nginx, if it's running PHP and so forth. We already know this is an Apache server running PHP, but I'm going to show you how to find that out using Metasploit. So we're going to do search and we're going to do HTTP underscore version like that. We're going to search for HTTP underscore version. All right. So you see we have the HTTP version auxiliary scanner. Number is zero, so use zero. All right, and like I've shown you guys in previous videos, and when you select an uh, auxiliary scanner like this, or if you select an exploit, you need to run show options. All right, and we see here our required options. All of them are set, except for the R host, which is our target. So we're going to set our host. I'm going to do 192.168.1.147, which is the IP of my Metasploitable 2 server. <clears throat> All right, so show options. All right, everything's set. So at this point, you can type in exploit or you can type in run. I've been showing you guys exploit, but let's do run. Does the same thing. All right, so. It did a quick scan. It was real quick. It came right back. So here's the IP address of our Metasploitable server on port 80, running Apache 2.2.8 on Ubuntu, powered by PHP 5.2.4. Same information we found in, Rob in, in our web developer tools. And we also saw a PHP info um, file that showed our PHP version. So, but this is another way you can find it using Metasploit. All right, so now, so I, I happen to know this version of PHP is vulnerable to uh, attack. There are some vulnerabilities for this. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to, if you recall, in a previous video, I showed you how to use a tool called Search Sploit. We're going to use that to check to see if there are any vulnerabilities for this version of Apache with PHP. So let's do Search Sploit. And we're going to say Apache 2.2.8. 
and we only want to see Apache vulnerabilities that are related to PHP. All right. Okay. All right. So we came. It came back with two different vulnerabilities. And if you recall in the PHP info file, I had mentioned that it was CGI enabled. PHP was. So we're going to take this first vulnerability and we're going to test this one to see if it's an if our this web server is actually vulnerable to this exploit. So what we did is we confirmed through search exploit that there is already a ready-made exploit available. And so now second thing we need to do is check to see if that exploit is available in Metasploit. So we're going to type in grip. Remember grip is our friend. It helps us search through all these exploits and get a get the exact results we need. So we're going to grip CGI because we want to look for this CGI. So we're just going to pick a word CGI and we're going to say search for PHP vulnerabilities for 5.4.2. Right? Hit enter. And what do you know? There we go. So we have a PHP CGI argument injection vulnerability that I was aware of. So we're going to select that vulnerability by select going and running use one. All right, so we have selected the vulnerability. It is going to default to a meterpreter reverse TCP shell. Um, so what that means is we're going to run the exploit on our our web server, the PHP web server that we're trying to hack into. We're going to run this exploit against it, and if it's vulnerable, it's going to spawn a shell and it's going to connect back to our Kali Linux box. So let's do show options because we need to set a couple options here. All right, first thing we need to do is we need to see our required fields. All of them are filled out except for the R host, which is our target. So we're going to say set R host 192.168.1.147. We're going to set that R host. And then I want to point out one thing. So, and, and, and Metasploit already does this for you because it knows your, your Kali Linux server's IP address. But you see the L host and the L port. The L host should be the IP address of your Kali Linux machine, you know, the one you're running Metasploit on. And what this is doing is it's, it's creating that reverse TCP connection. It's going to listen for a connection back from that web server on port 4444. So this is already set by the, um, by the um, exploit. So we are now ready to just run exploit. All right, I'm going to check this out and make sure. And what do you know? So I knew that that CGI vulnerability existed on this um, Apache web server with PHP 5.4.2. And look, we have a interpreter session. So if we do sys info, you'll see that that's the meta exploitable 2 server. Um, we just exploited and hacked into um, Apache web server running PHP 5.4.2. That's how it's done. All right, so we went over a couple of things. We went over robot.txt file. That's a good place to look for hidden directories and, you know, files that may be sensitive that you could view because they're not configured properly. Um, we looked at web dev tools on how to determine the version of the web server and the software versions that's running for that particular web server. We looked at PHP info that gives us a lot of juicy details about the PHP installation. And then we use our Metasploit HTTP version scanner to confirm all this, um, to make sure it's running Apache 2.2.8 and PHP 5.4.2. So I hope you guys found this interesting. And like I said, make sure you leave comments. I'm here to help you. I'm here. I want to help you learn. I've been doing this forever, and I'm really enjoying teaching you guys. So leave in the comments any questions you have, and stay tuned for the next video. Alrighty, thanks.